Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Dr. Julian Navoa. Today I will be demonstrating a fully conscious or awake chin liposuction. Thank you for watching. We begin the procedure by numbing our insertion point located discreetly in the midline below the chin using approximately 5 cc's of lidocaine with epinephrine. Once the midline is anesthetized by creating a wheel or bleb, the tissue is infiltrated from the midline to the lateral edges of the jaw just below the ear lobes and neck approximately 2 cm above the sternal notch by using 30 cc of lidocaine diluted in normal saline. Due to the proximity of the infiltration needle to nerves and major blood vessels, such as the carotid arteries and jugular veins, the needle must be run parallel to the skin. Additional protection can be achieved by using the infiltrate for passive hydroseparation of the underlying tissue in a similar manner achieved by tumescent lidocaine. The patient should be advised that although pain receptors are anesthetized, pressure receptors are not, and therefore movement and pressure sensations will still be present during the procedure. The patient should also be advised that elevation in heart rate and mild shaking are also expected due to the effect of epinephrine in the infiltrate. After completion of infiltration of one side of the submental tissue, the same insertion point is used to anesthetize the other side. The same techniques and level of caution should be considered when infiltrating the symmetrical side. It is often beneficial to palpate the tissue as it is being infiltrated to evaluate the degree of hydroseparation and tumescence that is being created by the infiltrate. The patient should again be advised that an elevated heart rate and shaking are normal due to the effect of epinephrine in the infiltrate, and this should pass about 10 minutes following the completion of the procedure. The third and final area of infiltration is the midline itself, from the submental incision point to the sternal notch. Due to the angle of infiltration with the needle, it is often beneficial to pinch the skin with the fingers of the opposing hand in order to maximize the space between the tip of the needle and the platysmus muscles and the superficial cervical fascia. Approximately 30 cc of infiltrate is used to anesthetize this area with a total of 100 milliliters of infiltrate used to anesthetize the submental tissue. Once the submental tissue has been appropriately anesthetized, a 2 mm 6 inch cannula under continuous negative pressure via vacuum suction is used to liposuction the area. Multiple small bore holes are superior and safer than a lower number of larger bore holes in order to reduce the risk of visible linear defects in the skin due to damage of the integrity of the skin by using excessively large cannulas. Liposuction is carried out by using the midline incision point and moving laterally from the jawline to the sternal notch in a fan-like pattern. The same technique is used on the opposite side. When necessary, it's better to place gentle pressure against the skin and raise the cannula rather than angle the cannula towards the platysmus in order to avoid injuring this delicate muscle. Liposuction of the midline should be done in a similar manner as the infiltration of this area. Caution should be maintained when angling the cannula in a downward direction, which is often difficult due to the position of the incision. Lifting and pinching the skin is often helpful when liposuctioning this area. The submental midline and its mediolateral aspects tends to be the areas of highest amount of adipose tissue for removal. However, 
Caution should be maintained not to overly liposuction this area to avoid leaving noticeable skin defects. Skin closure can be appropriately achieved with a single 5-0 absorbable interrupted suture, which will allow drainage from the incision and reduce the appearance of the scar. A compression dressing is recommended to be worn for at least 24 hours following surgery. The patient is advised that drainage will continue for one to two days. A combination of acetaminophen and ibuprofen is recommended for pain. A cold roller may be used for swelling. The patient may resume full activity in 24 hours and final appearance may take between two and three months. These photographs were taken eight hours post-op. Thank you for watching our presentation.